I am Dr. Colin Perry. I research in uh, documentary and new media. I actually am the course leader in the Bachelor of Screen Production at Holmes Glen Institute. What is documentary? I think to answer that question, we've got to ask the question, what is documentary? And going back to John Grierson, who said these documentary images, he was using it as a description of existing images. Uh, it is extremely misused, in my opinion, when we start drawing boundaries around it and saying, this is documentary, this is not documentary. I don't think we can afford to do that in the postmodern era. What we're basically dealing with is, is an image is a sound functioning in a documentary manner? I think that's a far more appropriate question than is this documentary? So therefore, when we're dealing with social media and the content on YouTube and Facebook and, and these sorts of media, uh, we have to ask the question, are these clips documentary in their function rather than can we apply the tag documentary to these clips? Or can we draw a box around a certain number of clips and say, this is what documentary is? I don't think so. I think documentary is a descriptive term of what exists. And if it's documenting reality, if it's documenting actuality, then we can call it documentary. And in this case, a great deal of what is on social media in terms of visual images is in fact documentary. Documentary, I think, is becoming more fragmented. Uh, by the very nature of the form itself, of the media itself. When we're dealing with social media, we're generally dealing with download situations and streaming. But prior to streaming technology, uh, it was necessary to download documentary in chunks, in, in fragments. And this is, I think, really profoundly affected its form. Prior to that, we were used to seeing documentaries an hour in length, very standard, but now we have to see pieces, components of documentaries and, and view them in sequence if we wish to have a documentary of that sort of length. So as with many other forms of media, it's becoming shorter, it's becoming more concise, it's becoming more fragmented. So we're, we're seeing it in pieces rather than seeing it as a whole. I think documentary can be adapted to fit almost any format. And I think that's really what we're talking about. It's, it's like a flow of water. It can go through a pipe, it can go through a channel, it can run down a street gutter. And documentary with media form is much the same sort of situation. So that you can actually have documentary on any form that will function as a screen. So it, it can be within a game format, it can be within a, a projection on a wall format, it can be within a social media format, it can function in any way that a screen can function. So documentary is adaptable. Remember, documentary is a descriptive term. Uh, it is any image, any content that actually documents actuality, documents reality. That's the, the incredibly important thing to remember about documentary. It can apply to photographs, it can apply to text, it can apply to images, it can apply to anything that we want to apply it to. Uh, documentary is a very flexible term and it's a very flexible form. I think documentary will still exist in its linear form. I don't think the linear form will disappear or go away. We look to cinema in all its forms, they still exist as they always have. What we have here is an addition, an addendum, something else that's functioning alongside the traditional format. So um, documentary will exist as the conventional hour-long television documentary or the cinema feature documentary, but it will also exist in its social media, internet distributed format. So th they will, I think, work quite comfortably alongside each other. I don't think there is any conflict. They may reduce the market of, of the mainstream documentary slightly, but I don't think so. It's really something that functions on the laptop, in the lounge room, on the iPhone, and it has a world of its own, it's a, it has a function of its own. I don't think it's going to conflict with that. What will occur more and more is more documentary will be produced for that media as time goes by. This is still very new. Um, and as, as the iPhone mobile sort of distribution networks improve, I think we're going to see an absolute explosion in documentary that's made for this media.
from the perspective of the documentary maker, I think the biggest mistake documentary makers could make at the moment is to try and maintain control. I, I think it needs to be recognised my role as a documentary maker has shifted. It's no longer what it was. I'm not the paternalistic decision maker from the Griasonian days of documentary. I, I'm certainly not that. Neither am I the cinema verite selector of information. That role's been taken from me as well. What I am doing now is accessing and presenting information which is relevant, open to interpretation, freely interactive and fragmented so that viewers can source, view in the way they want to, in the order they want to, to come to the conclusions that they want to. Letting them have that particular function, not trying to hold on to it. Uh, we can still provide commentary to a certain degree through all sorts of various means, text that accompanies images, the very images that we put up there, there is still a selection uh, element to this of course and allowing people the right to be interactive and come to their own conclusions as they view. The fact that an issue, an event, an action can be filmed on a very cheap, freely available phone, uploaded to the internet, made public to the entire world within seconds. This has never been like that before. We've, we've never had that sort of access. Um, so an atrocity can be, can be filmed and distributed to the whole world instantaneously. There is no delay. And that, I think, is, is a wonderful limiting factor on society in, in that things like atrocities that occur with, with governments and police and armies, there's, there's no hiding them anymore. They can't cover these things up. They're going to be out instantaneously. So it really changes the whole, the whole fabric of human society. I think everybody is accountable. Everybody is accountable because of this technology. I think it's a wonderful thing.